All right. So yeah, welcome everyone. Thank you all, like I said, for being here on your Valentine's Day evening to talk about care and love um, in the local peace economy. What a fitting, fitting topic for the evening, um, care. Um, and as we have done for the last few calls, if you've been here, um, we'll start with uh, a grounding. Um, and tonight um, we're going to uh, move through a somatic exercise led by Reverend Angel Kyoto Williams. Um, because we can't feel care or offer authentic care if we are not in our bodies. So our grounding tonight is going to help us connect with our embodied experience. The war economy relies on each of us being cut off from our bodies because as Reverend Angel Kyoto Williams says, if we were in our bodies, we would not be able to tolerate what is happening. This practice that we're about to move through is one that helps us ground and center in our bodies. So you're welcome to sit, or stand or lay down during the practice, whatever you need, um, it's just a few minutes long. And remember that there are no shoulds or supposed tos or getting it right when it comes to um, feeling into the body. It's just noticing what arises in your experience and being in relationship with it. And that um, this is something that I come back to often that perfectionism is a tool and a symptom of a war economy. Um, so with that, I will share my screen. And we tested this, hopefully it comes through okay, but we will see. Um, and regardless, it'll be shared out in the follow-up email. And just to hopefully make it run a little bit more smoothly, I won't um, make it full screen. I think that might help. Oh, and actually, let me stop recording because I think that might help too. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, so just coming back to center, centering and that length, that width, that depth, and coming back to your core, feeling into what matters for you. Just a little taste of a practice that can touch into caring for ourselves and extending into caring into caring for others. Thank you, Emily. Wow, that was beautiful. So as such a great reminder for what we're going to talk about today, but I first wanted to share with everyone um, that I saw Valentine's Day coming and my heart is broken into a thousand pieces. And with the images coming out of Rafa, I was just like, what my favorite day of the year is Valentine's. What could I possibly do? So uh, last night I got on a plane and I came to DC and I made posters and valentines to deliver to all the members of congress that 5000 code pinkers signed and um we went we were so big and a and a, a group of palestinian students came and joined us so there was probably 50 of us we broke into three or four groups and we went around and it was beautiful and horrible um, so many of the people from Palestine could not believe how stupid, Islamophobic, racist, and cruel members of Congress were. That was very hard. I, I was holding many of them in my arms as they walked out of the rooms in disbelief and horror. And um, so then we found out there was a hearing about the Houthis um, with the uh, members of Congress on the foreign um affairs committee so we went there and we all had blood on our hands and uh we were two rows so it's a hearing room of only three rows and we were two of the entire rows with blood on our hands and i don't think they expected it but here we have lots of people that had never been here before one guy named kevin he was with me in the streets on the weekend and lived in la and i i said well come to dc you know and so um there were just tons of people that hadn't been there before. I have sat through many hearings of Congress and you literally think, you know, you have to prepare yourself to go in because they are so crazy, including the very first day of Code Pink. But sitting there, because if you say anything, you can get arrested. And we don't really have free speech, as we know in Congress. You can't have a sign, you can't have messaging. And if you say anything, they can arrest you. So um, Medea is very nervous. She's like, I like, Medea, I have to get up and say ceasefire. And she's like, oh, are you, you, do you want to be arrested? 
And so Anne Wright couldn't take it anymore. She like got up, waited till she got to the door, screamed back. The only answer to this is ceasefire because they're trying to say, you know, it's the Iran back Houthis and if we give them a ceasefire. Oh, a ceasefire is not going to make them stop because they're all full of them. I mean, it was just like bullshit out on top of bullshit. So then um, Kevin, he gets up, Palestinian, wants to go back to his family's home. He gets up and just starts singing free, free, uh, the low key song, free my Palestine, free Palestine, free Palestine. He's singing low key song, um, but walking out. So there was nothing the cops could do because he's just singing and leaving. So the whole, you know, 25 people found a way to get up and say something. Um, and it was disruptive uh, for probably a half an hour of you know disrupting and disrupting and disrupting. But I wanna say in this grounding exercise, it was just like each person grounded in their own heart, speaking from their own place and getting up when it was right for them. And it was so powerful that no one got arrested, not a person. And Medea was shocked because, you know, usually if anybody gets up and speaks, they're arrested. We had our banners out. And so um, this was deeply disrupted, including then all of the members of Congress had to come out. And we got all of them in the halls, like walking for five minutes sometimes to a, a to the elevator um, to talk to them about ceasefire and hear the insanity uh, that they believe in, which is really, really toxic. Um, but that was my Valentine's Day, and that was my form of like, how did I want to care um, for myself? And then how did I want to care for the people in Palestine and in Gaza? And so that's kind of how it manifested. And it was a pretty magical day. And if you want to look at Could Paint social media, you can see some of the videos and photos and they'll continually come out for the next week. And then we plan tomorrow. I'm picking Susan Sarandon up from the um Sarandon up from the train station at noon, where we're gonna um disrupt uh, Kim Jeffrey's office, who's trying to get the Senate bill that just passed for the Ukraine uh Taiwan Israel funding to go through Congress. So we will disrupt with Susan in his office. And then we'll go down in Rashida Talib. Um, we'll get to say hi to Susan. And we've got 17 um, media outlets following us. So it's she's it's great that she's here um, because she's going to get some media to come to these meetings. And in the afternoon, we'll cover another uh, five offices in the Longworth building and get her back to the train station at five. So um, that's the couple of days here in um, Washington, D.C. So I just wanted to give you that for your heart to help heal. I know the broken hearts that we're all suffering right now. Um, so I just wanted to open with, have any of you been working on the pivots or diving into any of the information in the book? And did you want to share anything that you're learning questions you have um, before we move into talking more about care? No questions, concerns, interesting things happen in a pivot. All right, I guess there, there's none. Um, uh, so let's talk about care and um, why this is so important to the local peace economy. First of all, you know, just with the grounding exercise to do any of this work, it has to be rooted in our own, uh, as, as they say, you know, uh, put your oxygen mask on first, in our own space of finding uh, that place of care, of grounding, of rooting, because what we're trying to do is be useful for others, a tuning fork into the divest from the war economy for others, which is a practice for all of us constantly, but being grounded, being rooted, and understanding about care, because really the war economy is the antithesis of care. If you look at all the pivots, they are not human. They are not about caring about life. So it's breaking all those habits also um, can be 
Well, first of all, so many times you can turn to grief for the things you've lost, for the things you've done, for the self you've given away so that you come to grief. And when we come to grief, that takes care. But care is a uh, a cycle. It's it's a it's a connective form. So the care of other bees, others becomes the care of self and the care of self becomes the care of others. And in such a way that you get into it and you're not even sure where you are because it's not about self and other, it's about care. And it's like where, you know, where you are in the cycle of care, sometimes you never know because sometimes you caring for another is a more care for yourself than it is for the care of the other person. So it's really like, how do we be in this place of care? Which is really, when we look at the peace economy, it's the service to life. And care is the service to life. And it's a it's some something that we're we all need to practice back into. And that's, you know, coming to Washington, DC and being in the halls and not even knowing all the people that I would be caring for all day. And yet I probably got the most care because my broken heart feels so rich as I end the day and so nourished. Um, even with the stupidity, it was just like the vibrancy, the authenticity, the hearts that were shared. So it's entering that is the same as all that we're doing. It's, it's entering the unknown and watching the magical things that happen as we are care, accept care, and give care, and not even knowing where we are in that cycle. So... Um, I'm uh, one of the stories I want to, you know, just uh, share is that April, who started on this uh, journey with us, has written a lot of the articles. Um, and maybe, uh, Emily, you could give them a link to the wiki. She's written most of the articles in the wiki about all the local peace economy projects that have arisen and what they're doing and how they're doing it. And, and um, she, she started dealing with care. And this is five years into the journey, and she teaches me about care. And I think every month she learns another thing, which reminds us that it's an ever-ending relationship of learning. One of the things she did to care was she um, started teaching yoga in her community as a local peace economy project and realized that by teaching yoga, in the in a new way, in a way about care, where she was relating to the them as this is a care for your body instead of some of the ways that yoga can be taught, that it became her way of caring for herself, and it gave her uh, what she says is the courage to find all the ways the care was missing in her life, and I have to say that she's one of the people that I have watched glow. I mean, when she started, life was very hard for her. And now I literally see her in the flow of her life. And so I want to say that care does take us into the flow of our life. It takes us into the flow of, the, our, of the, our lives with ourselves. And that way, the flow of life with others becomes much easier. And it's a practice as this all is. There's We never arrive somewhere, but being on the path trying out these things, being committed, being in the curious, being in listening. It's just this, you don't know where it's going to take you. It is surprising, but I promise it's more nourishing than, you know, what we've been indoctrinated into, into the war economy. So many beautiful surprises happen every day. And that's one of my favorite things about April is just like literally have watched a flower bloom. Um, from where she started to where she is. And even right now, especially with her father dying and some other difficult things in her life, she knew to just say, hello, everyone, I'm going to move into care and I won't be available for a few weeks. In a very clear, no, no apology, no, not nothing uh, covering it, just the clarity of I am moving into care. And the leadership that that is to say into a room for everyone. It, it was quite beautiful. So um, we thought, Emily, did you want to take it from here? Sure, yeah. And I'll just share a, a piece of my own story just to kind of, yeah, speak to the truth of that. 
um, in my own journey with care. And then I'll, I'll share one more video. Um, yeah, Jody and I were talking about this before the call, but in terms of how the war economy has impacted my own relationship with care, I remember so specifically, and I've had many iterations of this experience since, of, I remember like coming down the stairs and there was a very close friend of mine at the bottom. And I don't remember exactly what he was saying, but it was something loving or there was like a loving energy coming towards me. And I remember just feeling like this block of not being able to take it in, um, like in my cells and my tissues and my soma, um, which kind of relates back to um, what I was speaking to at the beginning of we need to be in our bodies to give and receive care authentically. Um, so such a huge piece of this journey back into care is coming back home to our bodies. Um, so just wanted to share that. And, and it's, it's not a linear process. It's not a linear, it hasn't been a linear process for me. I can share another story that happened a month ago where I was being held so lovingly and caring with so much care. And I was in my head and in a shame spiral and I just couldn't take it in. And then, you know, that's okay. I, I offer that part of my self care too. And I come back. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to share that uh, piece of my story. Um, and we're going to watch one more video from Reverend Angel Kyoto Williams, who I should have said in the beginning, she is a um, Zen um, priest, teacher, um, social activist, um, spiritual teacher, um, who has so much great stuff out there. I highly encourage, um, if, if you're resonating with what she's sharing tonight, to look more in to her work. Um, I can put some links in the chat, um, but for now I'm gonna pause the recording and um, I'll share this video. Um, the invitation is to, to listen with your body as much as possible, take deep breaths, and then we'll um, go into some breakout rooms. Um, so pause the recording. Hmm, okay. So on that note, after Rev has spoken to care and its role in the shift away, its role in our shift away from the war economy, we're gonna share with each other a little bit. Um, and I'll put this in the chat, but the prompt for this evening is, when have you felt cared for or experienced care? And what did that make possible for you? Again, that's when have you felt cared for or experienced care? And what did that make possible for you? And the invitation um, is when you get in your groups, you take 30 seconds to a minute of silence together before diving in to ask the question to yourself and feel into your body for the response. Your head might have an answer right away. If you're anything like me, it always has thinks it has an answer. Um, but just kind of like letting that be for a moment and listening in with your body about when you've maybe felt cared for. And rather than this being kind of a back and forth conversation, at least at the beginning, um, allow each person to share uninterrupted and listen as you're listening, not and as you're not the one sharing, listening with your full heart and your full body. And then if there's time after each person has shared, um, then you know there's room for conversation and but trying to avoid the crosstalk just so each person can can be witnessed and and share fully. Um, so Jody, are are you able to do the breakout rooms? I'm I'm ready. So um, we'll be there for ten minutes, and then we'll bring you back. Um, oh, I'll put the um in the chat, and you'll put in the chat the um yeah. The, what, the reflecting on. All right, yeah. see you back in 10. So did anyone uh, find anything in the in their breakouts that they wanted to share with everyone? Did something hit you in a way that was fresh um, that you might want to share? One of the things that that we talked about is was a little bit of history like uh, my brother was um you know went to vietnam and a couple of the other 
folks there had experiences in, in mm -hmm. different situations and and um, yeah I, I I found the breakout room really helpful to both you know have a conversation and to listen and to find some common ground there it was very helpful thank you Macy, did you hurt your eye? Um, yeah. <laughs> I oh. got a, I hit it on the, the cabinet, got a little bit of a cut. The cut got infected, but I have these. Um, I went to the doctor for antibiotics for it. I have these um, hand warmers left over from Washington, D.C. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So you're taking, care, you're taking care of yourself. I'm so glad. <laughs> care in action. Did anyone else? Um, well, while we're on it, Macy, um, I just heard from Moji that you're you're pulling together something about PATH this um in in Olympia or what the Olympic Peninsula is that what you call it where you are? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you we are. You want to share and um, because we want to hear like where has this taken you and what are you doing? So um, we'd love to hear what that is for you. Well, um, what we have out here is a code pink inspired group of of mostly women. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and um, and and a lot of the workbooks and. And, and a lot of conversations like what we just had in breakout rooms and the pivots, I've been handing those out like crazy. And, um, and so to give it a little bit of a more like, it's a thing feel we're trying to have actual stuff go on, right? And so we, Moji has stuff going on. I think we all know. So his project is path. And um, he he's going to be able to explain that better than I am. But I'm getting people from my community together um, to to watch his presentation on um, on path is Iranian nonviolence and truth and reconciliation um, and intersectional circles or chambers of compassion. I like how he puts so he's he's spreading the word widely and of course I'm trying to get my group I've realized that there's a couple organizational difficulties here that I'm not used to and one is that um there's not a lot of like town center where you actually run into people like it's built along a straight line because this this used to just be a highway going somewhere else and um and it occurred to me that even that like it changes the way people interact. There's also not a lot of parents with kids and typically they have communities already pre-built. Um, and, and so I've been doing a lot of studying my area and, and kind of trying to, there's a desperate need for connection. Um, and, and, and people are, are ready to be on board. It's a little bit confusing explaining work we, because you're here with me, are code pink, pink inspired, and and uh -huh. here's some materials. And there's this guy. I don't know. I heard a speaker on an anti-imperialism um, forum last month, and she's like saying, "Well, there was a huge problem, and and she didn't know what to do about it, and and so she just said, "Well, I'd better do something." And then what? Well, I don't know, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> And how are you going to do it? I don't know, but I'm just going to do it. And so that's kind of the way I'm approaching this like that. So what we're just doing is having a code pink inspired Olympic Peninsula um, Zoom watch from partly my house with Moji's path presentation. <laughs> um, <laughs> that well, you makes do sense. Okay. I told you. <laughs> Wait, you just nailed it. You okay. just nailed yeah. it. Did you say you're not articulate? <laughs> you're very articulate. Because <laughs> you're grounded in your truth and you just nailed it. 
because unknown. that's the thing we're walking into the unknown and mm -hmm. to have you know it's it's that to be willing to walk into the unknown into the i don't know but i do know where i don't want to be i do know what i don't want so like i'm going to walk in a new direction and see who wants to join me and so you are an amazing model for what this is and then the other piece we haven't even gotten to yet and i know you, it's in the book but it's mapping and so mm. one of the things we don't do which you just were describing is the mapping of where we live. We don't even know where we live. We live somewhere, we have no idea where we live. It's made you more aware of where you live, right? You, you, you became more aware of like, whoa, there is no commons, you know? So, you know, what we're taking us back to is a commons that we share, that, you know, the commons used to support the community and it had all the things we needed in it. And those have been privatized and destroyed and, you know, the Walmarts and everything that takes us away from the commons, which was uh, a small business, which isn't capitalism, which is just the market economy of, of care, you know, who had all the different spaces that were care. They weren't about being rich. They were about the the, the care, the the which Moji knows, which I, I find in Iran, that's why I say it's not a capitalist country. It's very rooted in what is local, what is connected, how do we serve each other? You go to a, a store, you go shopping in Iran, the person selling you the thing they make, you know, it's not a, it's not a shopkeeper hired by the shop owner, you know, it's that, that separation on separation. So, and, you know, I, I think it's, those kind of things that we we get back to it's like what is the relationship what is the commons and um i want to say that to you um warren and andrea because um as you're you know finding your way it's the invitation it's the creating the possibility and there are things like facebook locally or next door where you can say what you're doing and invite people and you'd be surprised at how many people are like, wow, that sounds interesting. Um, so use some of the places that are already available to just have a conversation about it and see who writes back. Um, and then, you know, the mapping of your community. And I, I say this to both of you because you're you're looking at these communities that you're finding kind of a barren as far as local peace economy goes. So, you know, part of it is the mapping, which we'll get to in a couple of weeks. But that is that discovery of where do I live and what created this way and how did how it's created also be part of the war economy in the in the way it separates and divides. And we see this in so many of, you know, spaces that were created as freeway places with malls and, you know, not not connective spaces and and what can be created to connect people um, and, you know, making, sharing um, all kinds of fun things of a finding a person that's, you know, renting a space, but they can't find anybody. Well, what did they want to give it to the community and have community things start happening there? You'd be surprised how many other people in the community would start organizing things. So um, it really is just as you said, Macy, it, something has to happen. So I'm just going to do it and see who comes and see what happens. And it just becomes, you know, you're in discovery and creativity. And then what flows is is what this is. Um, so... Um, um, Sister Jody, I huh? I just sent the link to the to the Zoom where where the flyer for the Zoom gathering that Sister oh, thank Macy, you. yeah, that Sister Macy is spending so much time and so much heart to organize so that so so we invite everybody to come to this meeting, which is which is three to five p.m. this huh? Sunday. And okay, then, and maybe Emily can help by um, working with Grace to get an invitation to everyone in the area from um, from the Code Pink list. So, uh, great. And it doesn't have to be in that area. It can be anywhere. All right. Oh, so thank I you. I was curious, Jody. <clears throat> at one point, I think there was a map of peace economies or something. Yeah. I'm not sure regionally there is. I'd like to kind of be aware of who's around me if that's possible. Why don't you stay on a little bit Ooh, after yeah. with Emily and she can show you how to use her map that is on the website. Um, okay. You know, how to, how to search and find what's in your community and what's around. She can help you with that. All right. So um, we're almost over. And um, 
we were thinking for um, in the next time we come together, we're going to take the care a little um, further in because this is a big piece of the local peace economy work and getting into that flow of care. And, and we'll get more into the connection piece um, the next time around. So we were thinking for like the homework, um, you know, keep working on your pivots and, and developing what you're doing, but really be present with care, you know, and just a reminder, the care is small and simple and intimate and, you know, flows. So watch where that happens. And, you know, just paying attention might <laughs> reveal to you how much care is available in your life. And, and also, as Emily spoke to, what happens when care is coming in your direction? And are you a wholehearted uh, uh, acceptor? Because if we get in the way of the flow, um, we get in the way of the flow. And so it's the practice on both sides of the flow coming and the flow leaving and just witnessing, maybe, you know, feel free to write notes that you could share with next time. So, you know, we shared our stories, but we learn from each other's stories of like, you know, wow, what does that feel like? And, and what magic happened? And how did I find new ways that I'm cared for that I didn't even realize? And how did I find new ways to care and what came back from that? So that's that's kind of the, the homework that comes. And you'll find as you're practicing the pivots, care is inside of all that practice. Um, I think it's inside of all the pivots practice. So does anyone have any questions they need before we see each other in two weeks? I just wanted to make a quick comment about um, what I'm involved in right now and have been for many years is um, as a peace activist for and a earth activist, et cetera. I'm a playwright and a musician and a poet. So one of the things I've been trying to do is make those things more accessible to the community so that everybody can share in it. You know, you don't have to have a play that's to cost $500 a person to go to, but you know, there, there are plays or poetry jams or music jams that can, can happen and that can inspire our community and get conversations started because those sorts of artistic things really help people to connect with the depth of what we need. We agree with you. Culture is where change happens. So we totally yeah. agree with you. And once you can create space where it can happen yes. in a flow <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's you know, something that's, I'm working on right now. So find out how much amazing brilliance is in the community that doesn't <laughs> ever have a chance to express itself. Right. So which goes I, to me, I, that, you know, finding that space where it's a, you know, a story sharing, a poetry <laughs> sharing, you know, it's like making up, you know, plays. It's, you know, just getting together and being creative, singing, all of yeah, that. and even in even at our actions, you know, in, incorporating some of that into our actions, I loved seeing the the sort of um, dioramas or whatever was, that were being done in front of the White House, you know, with the the babies among the rubble. Oh, that was ours. You know, the super and some other things, you know, prisoners being Palestinian pr prisoners being mistreated, you know, and it's it's like that stuff is so grabbing and it, people don't forget that easily they will remember and they will make them think about that um, well happy valentine everyone and so uh, much wait love. wait wait <laughs> uh, i have one great suggestion for code pink i am so yes. tired of seeing these hearts being so red <laughs> i need to get have a campaign to try to get an emoji my name is moji <laughs> Uh, an emoji that has a pink heart. Oh, wait, there's a pink heart with sparkles on it. That there I is? Can, uh, pink heart. I with can't sparkles. find it. Oh, oh yeah. Pink, it's heart. There. pink heart with sparkles is <laughs> <in> my emojis. <laughs> no, I'm saying oh, no. easily findable heart because when I. I'll send I, it to you, emoji. In the reactions, <laughs> no, in the reactions, it only gives a red heart. Oh, well, we'll talk to Zoom. We'll talk to Zoom. But I Hi, think that's... Judy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you, Thank you.
to you all. Thank, thank you. Good night, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Take good care. Oh, and Emily, you were staying on for... Yeah. Yeah. I can do Anybody that. want to stay on to learn how to use the map on the website? Um, sure. Emily's doing a little tutorial. <laughs> thank yeah. you, Moji. Yeah. I see it. And then the follow up email. <laughs> but, okay. Actually, let me stop the recording. Okay.